Hey, what is up, everybody? I am here to give you guys my uh, read aloud series for The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, Chapter 20. And um, yeah, I'm just going to get right into it. I'm almost done with this book. I'm over halfway done and uh, pretty happy about it. I got uh, 15 more chapters to read through, so I'm hoping to finish this book by um, early next week. So uh, I just want to get right into this. Um, if you want to check out my read aloud series for chapters 1 through 19, click on the playlist down in the description box below. And let's just get right into this. This chapter um, is called Becky and a Dilemma. And it starts on page 138 and it ends on page 144. So let's just get right into it. Um, so 138. There was something about Aunt Polly's manner when she kissed Tom that swept away his low spirits and made him lighthearted and happy again. He started to school and had the luck of coming upon Becky Thatcher at the head of Meadow Lane. His mood always determined his manner. Without a moment's hesitation, he ran to her and said, I acted mighty mean today, Becky, and I'm so sorry. I won't ever, ever do that way again, as long as ever I live. Please make up, won't you? The girl stopped and looked him scornfully in the face. I'll thank you to keep to yourself, to keep yourself to yourself, Mr. Thomas Sawyer. I'll never speak to you again. She tossed her head and passed on. Tom was so stunned that he had not even pr presence, he had not even presence of mind enough to say, who cares, Miss Modi, until the right time to say it had gone by. So he had said nothing, but he was in a fine rage nonetheless. He moped into the schoolyard, wishing she were a boy and imagining how he would trounce her if she, she were. He presently encountered her and delivered a thinning remark as he passed. She heard once uh, she heard one in return, and the, the angry beach was complete. No, the, the angry breach was complete. It seemed to Becky, in her hot resentment, that she could hardly wait for school to take in. She was so impatient to see Tom flogged for the injured spelling book. If she had any lingering notion of exposing Alfred Temple, Tom's offensive flint had driven it entirely away. Poor girl, she did not know how fast she was near in trouble herself. The master, Mr. Dobbins, had reached middle age with an unsatisfied ambition. The darling of his desires was to be a doctor, but poverty had decreed that he should be nothing higher than a village schoolmaster. Every day he took a mysterious book out of his desk and absorbed himself in it at times when no classes were recited. He kept that book under lock and key. There was not an urchin in school, but was wishing to have a glimpse of it. But the chance never came. Every boy and girl had a theory about the nature of that book, but no two theories were alike. And there was no way of getting at the facts. Um in that in the case now as becky was passing by the desk which stood um near the door she noticed that the key was in the lock it was a precious moment she glanced around found herself alone and the next instant she had the book in her hands the title page professor somebody's um anatomy carried no information to her mind. She be so she began to turn the leaves. She became she came at once um upon a handsomely engraved and colored front piece. At once upon a handsomely engraved oh sorry. Um a human um stalk um so a human 
figure stalked naked. At that moment, a shadow fell on the page, and Tom Sawyer stepped in at the door and caught a glimpse of the picture. Becky snatched at the book to close it and had the hard luck to tear the picture plate half down the middle. She thrust the volume into the desk, turned the key, and bust out crying with shame and vexation. Tom Sawyer, you are just as mean as you can be to sneak upon a person and look at what they're looking at. How could I know you was looking at anything? You ought to be ashamed of yourself, Tom Sawyer. You know you're going to tell on me, and oh, what shall I do, and what shall I do? I'll be weeped, and I never was weeped, whipped, sorry, whipped, and I was never was whipped in school. Then she tampered her little foot and said, be so mean if you want to. I know something that's going, I know something that's going to happen. You just wait and see, see your, wait, you just wait and you'll see. Hateful, hateful. And she flung out of the house with a new expulsion of crying. Tom stood still, rather flustered by it, this onslaught. Presently, he said to himself, What a curious kind of, of a fool a girl is. Never be licked in school. Shucks, what's a licking? That's just like a girl there, so thin-skinned and chicken-hearted. Well, of course, I ain't going to tell old Dobbins on this little fool, because there's other ways of getting even on her that ain't so mean. But wait a bit. Old Dobbins will ask who was it was tore his book. Nobody will answer. Then he'll do just the way he always does. Ask for one and then to other and when he comes to the right girl he'll know it without any telling girls face always tell on them they ain't got any backbone she'll get licked well it's kind of a tight place for becky thatcher because there ain't any way out of it tom coned coin no coned it says coned uh, the thin a moment longer and then added, All right, though, she'd like to see me in just such a fix. Let her sweat it out. Tom joined the mob of scholarly scholars outside. In a few moments, the master arrived and school took in. Tom did not feel a strong interest in his studies. Every time he stole a glance at the girl's side of the room, Becky's face troubled him. Considering all things, he did not want to pity her, and yet it was all he could do to help it. He could get up no ex exaltation and that was really worthy the name. Presently, the spelling book discovery was made, and Tom's Mine was entirely full of his own matters for a while after that. Um, and here you can see a picture of, uh, uh, I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but it's uh, of, um, what's his name? Mr. Dobbins, I think his name is. Um, Mr. Dobbins. Yeah, Mr. Dobbins, I thought his name was his name. Um, and like school being in session, so uh, I'm not. It, ha it hasn't gotten to that far in the book, but I just figured I'd show it now because I'll probably forget. Um, Becky roused up from her lethargy of distress and showed good interest in the proceedings. She did not expect that Tom could get out of his trouble by denying that he split the ink on the book himself, and she was right. The denial only seemed to make the thing worse for Tom. Becky supposed she would be glad of that, and she tried to believe she was glad of it, but she found she was not certain. When the worst came, when the worst came to the worst, she had an impulse to get up and tell on Alfred Temple, but she made an effort, effort and forced him, herself to keep still, because said she to herself, He'll tell about it, me tearing 
there in the book, the picture, sh sure, I wouldn't say a word not to save his life. Tom took his weapon and went back to his seat, not at all brokenhearted, for he thought it was possible that he had unknowingly upset the ink on the spelling book himself in some scowling about he had denied it for form's sake and because it was custom and had struck to the denial from principle. Um, a whole hour drifted by, the master sat nodded in his throne. The air was drowsy with the hum of study. By and by, Mr. Dobbins straightened himself up, yawned, then unlocked his desk and reached for his book, but seemed undecided whether to take it or leave it. Most of the pupils glanced up languidly, um, but there was two among them that watched his movement with intent eyes. Mr. Dobbins fingered his book absently for a while, then took it out and settled himself in his chair to read. Tom shot a glance at Becky. He had seen a haunted, helpless rabbit look as she did when a gun level, with a gun level at its head. When st in instantly, he forgot his quarrel with her. Quick, Something must be done, um, done in a flash too, but the very immense of the emergency paralyzed his invention. Good. He had an inspiration. He would run and snatch the book, sprint through the door and fly. But his resolution sh shook for one little instant and this chance was lost. The master opened the volume. If Tom only had the wasted opportunity back again, too late. There was no help for Becky now, he said. The next moment the master faced the book school. School. Every eye sunk under his gaze. There was that in it which smote even the in innocence with fear. There was silence while one might count ten. The master was gathering his wrath and he spoke. Who tore this book? There was not a sound. One could have heard a pin drop. The stillness continued. The master searched face after face for signs of guilt. Benjamin Roger, Benjamin Rogers, did you hear this book? A denial, another pause. Pause. Joseph Harper, did you? Another denial. Tom's uneasiness grew more and more intense under the slow torture of these proceedings. The master scanned the ranks of boys, considered a while, then turned to the girls. Amy Lawrence, a shake of the head. Gracie Miller, the same sign. Susan Harper, did you do this? Another negative, the girl was, the next girl was Becky Thatcher. Tom was trembling from head to foot with um, excitement and a sense of hopelessness of the situation. Rebecca Thatcher, Tom glanced at her face, it was white with terror. Did you tear no look at me in the face? Her hands rose in appeal. Did you tear this book? A thought shot like lightning through Tom's brain. He sprang to his feet and shouted, I done it. The school stared in perplexity at this incredible fo fo folly. Tom stood a moment to gather his dismembered faculties, and when he stepped forward to go to his punishment, the surprise, the gratitude, the uh, adoration that shone upon him out of, Be out of poor Becky's eyes seemed pay enough for a hundred floggings. Inspired by the splendor of his own act, he took without any outcry, the most mercilessly flaying that even Mr. Dobbins had ever administered, and also received with indifference the added quality of a command to remain two hours after school should be dismissed, for he knew who would wait for him outside till his captivity was done, and not count the tendous time as lost either. Tom went to bed that night, planning vengeance against Alfred Temple, for with shame 
and repentance. Becky had told him all, not forgetting her own treachery, but even the London for vengeance had to give away soon to pleasant, pleasant tour musings, and he fell asleep at last with Becky's um, latest words lingering dreamily in his ear. Tom, how could you be so noble? And that's the end of the chapter. Um, overall, really good chapter. I kind of like how they, uh, you know, uh, had this stuff happen with Becky Thatcher writing, tearing the page out of the book. And, uh, you know, you continue the tension between Becky and uh, Tom Sawyer. Um, and obviously, I think every book, um, I did figure that Tom was going to um, take the bullet for uh, um, Becky. Uh, but just because it was predictable, didn't make it good. Um, and I did like, you know, um, the way that uh, Mark Twain described all this uh, stuff that was taking place. So uh, I thought this was actually a uh, pretty good chapter here. I really enjoyed it. Uh, but that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, thank you guys for uh, watching this video. Please make sure you like, comment, and share this video so that way people will watch it. Make sure you guys uh, subscribe to this channel for more content and you click on the bell so that way every time I upload a video, you guys will get the notification for it. Uh, make sure you guys um, do the same for my uh, CM Brothers channel. Make sure you subscribe on there so for content. Make sure you click on the bell so that way every time I upload a video on there, you guys will get the notification for it. And that's pretty much it, guys. See you later.